Okay. So I'm going to talk about BP and the atom spectro sequence. Um, let's just do a little bit of like motivation so that we can have it here. So let's go back. Our old friend Molly. So, what was the idea? This the idea was we're going to probe a space with the most basic and dimensional objects, the simple cube. And then using these objects, we could shrug, so we put them all together into an algebraic thing called a singular complex. And then we're going to take the model of these complex. Well, this is a homology theory. Now, we have a very good intuitive picture of what this homology theory does because of you know simplicial and cellular homology. The idea is that the three n classes represent n dimensional fields. Okay, so what do we mean by an n-dimensional state? What is the you know circle with a one-dimensional pole? But more generally, you know, like a torus doesn't have a, a sphere, but it still has degree two homology. So a more general model for n-dimensional states. Example. Um, okay, so given a manifold. It always has a fundamental homology class, but it's not necessarily an integral homology, right? It has a fundamental homology class in Z2 homology. And the idea here is you know you just take a bunch of like n simplices that you map them into your space in the shape of M. And if you map M into a space, any space, we can push that forward and get a homology class. Now you could ask, um, are these all homology classes? So are all n-dimensional shapes measured by at least Z-mod 2 homology in the shape of manifolds? And Tom says the answer is less in this case. So for any X, any homology class, any Z-mod 2 homology class, um, you can find a manifold mapping to X. That's that you know, how that fundamental class. Okay. Another way to phrase this in terms of you know state only topic theory is that MO, which is the homology theory of unoriented manifolds, splits as a wedge of Z not two I over the same thing. That's sort of a why this is true. Okay, now we started with uh, integral homology. Right? So, what about that? So, here, not all uh, manifolds have fundamental classes, but oriented ones do. If you have an oriented manifold, then there's a fundamental homology class. And again, if you map M into a space, then you can multi from X. And you can ask the same question, but now the answer doesn't work. So, so not every homology. Um, and you can look for a more fundamental reason why that's not true, which is basically that the homology theory of oriented manifolds, which is MSO, is not.
Now, even though it's this is not true in generality, if you localize, I'm just going to put in parentheses, if you localize at two, then it's a wedge of different kinds of algorithms in the So you can write it as a wedge of eight needs wedge with the wedge of each of Okay, so at two, at the prime two, it's kind of true. Well, yeah. Anyway. So we can view this as a defect and we can ask, can we solve the defect? And that's what Brown, Brown and Peterson said. Okay. So we know Adam and McQueen spectra are not consistent. Describe um, ors and theories. So, here this is the prime. There's a spectrum. So BP depends on a prime, but we don't keep in the notation. Like that MU applies at P is the sum of suspensions. This one single spectrum. Um we haven't talked about what this localization thing is yet, but we're gonna get to that later. Um for now, this is just the schematic of, of BP. Okay. Um, we were talking about MSO though. This is a statement about MU. Well, MU is actually like you know the most complicated of the Bordism theories. So all the other ones um, also split in terms of Brown Peterson spectra. So MSO, MSU, MSB also. I'll just write that. Um, wait, also at odd prime. Okay. Yeah. At our parts. Is that symplectic cobordism? Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know if like this is like a commonly used mnemonic, but one mnemonic for VP besides Brown Peterson is prime bordism. That's kind of the idea of VP. It, it's like these are the prime decomposition of the bordism spectrum. So let's look at some, some properties. So we want to know it's one thousand degrees from one thousand. High star, unsurprisingly, looks kind of like MU, where these generators have degree that sort of grows as powers of P. And modulus, no, it's that one at all. But they're not identical, so the derivative map that goes from uh, takes uh, one of these E generators and multiplies it by P and then plus decomposing it. Shouldn't you have the should the derivative not be in the other direction? I don't think so. So think about it in terms of pi one, then this is like a really good thing. Right. Yeah. Good. Um, and so in this way, we actually view I star VP as a single sign. 
or other descriptions of what you um, Now, yeah, so this, uh, these rings look very similar to the case for MU, but the big difference is the degrees of the generators grow exponentially. Sorry, yeah, the degrees grow exponentially, which means there's way fewer generators because the degrees of the generators of these rings for MU grow linearly. In, in the in the index, so there's way fewer generators. Than okay. Talk about more of the structure as it relates to things we've done before. So, remember this one of the which is this isomorphism between the star rings and uh, you told us that formal group law association and you was a universal one. So formal group law is universal. <laughs> so something similar to something similar to group of DP. There's the review formal group law. Over a V P algebra is P typical. It's um so certain power is going to be zero at all primes, not in concept. So what is this power series? This is the thing defined by one over Q. Well, it's actually. We use the uh, use at the sign and this where these zetas are the primitive a primitive uh, Q series of these. Um, there's a special case where the definition is a little bit easier. Over torsion free, you can see how it's now. Too typical. Um, that the logarithm has a certain sign. It's a form where it's just powers. P uh, here. Yeah. That's what P typical is. Case. And then we have a more lot of clones here. So it says that the form of the lot P is the universal P typical. Okay, so this is really you starting to paint a picture that BP is just like the prime analog of MU. Just happens to be a use of the more common there are a few times. Okay, and this um this the formal group law associated to BP is specifically induced by a whole lot of things like this. Where you just so we can prove. So I'm using the fact that we know the little dark brain and this is like the analog the pizza for the analog. Okay. Um, about what off algebra looks like. Um, and the ring has 
by starting with the sphere spectrum and and killing most of the homotopy. That's what you're doing. You're basically attaching cells to um, let only one homotopy reach the balance. So what pretty does is instructs EP in a similar way, but this time they're killing exactly the odd homotopy reach. So you're attaching cells to let odd homotopy reach. Processes by attacking cells. So this tells you that VP is like, you know, half as complicated as the sphere and half as complicated as the under. So because of this, um, Ravenel sort of says that um, computing with VP is sort of this dance where you have to, like, you know, pick the right perspective to compute with. Because sometimes, you know, you want to exploit the fact that it's easier than the sphere and then easier than um, the same vector, but in different ways. I, something that I think should be mentioned is that this process is minimal in the sense that this is the BP is the smallest P local spectrum, uh, which is uh, additively and I believe multiplicatively irreducible that you can construct from this thing. Yeah, I think that that's true. I think that basically is a consequence of the original Brown Peterson paper um, says that, like, you know, BP is a, the unique spectrum of such properties. I think mean, that's a, uh -huh. like another statement of that. Right. But specifically, like, it comes from this construction, which you can do integrally as well. Right. I just think this cellular construction came after the definition mm -hmm. of BP. So you maybe you can see the same construction on the top of the original construction, but this one came later. Yeah, fifteen. Okay. Okay. So I mentioned Ravenel mentions this uh, art of computing with VP, and his point is we generally don't compute directly with VP. We pick an ideal, and you know the art isn't picking the right ideal. So compute. So in that vein, let's actually try to look at what the ideals look like. So this is due to land number, but everyone says that Morava knew it first. Which is you can define these ideals inside of the coefficients of BP. That look at they take G, just a number, and we take the first uh, final unit, like first n minus one generators. Um, so these ideals are invariant time ideals. Invariant has to do with the top algebraic structure. So I'm going to check here. And these are the only ones. So when you compute the BP, you try to pick one of these that when you mod out by it, it still has the information you want, but it removes. A lot of the technical difficulties in the computation. Okay. Um, last thing about VP I'm going to talk about is that there's uh, there are smaller versions of VP that are often convenient to work with. So remember at the beginning we were talking about representing homology classes by manifolds, and Sullivan was interested in well, can we you know modify the notion of manifolds so that it's true? 
And in pursuing that goal, what they did was they they introduced a procedure to basically you want to be able to kill off an ideal in the homotopy of such a horse of spectrum. You want to realize that ring as the homotopy of a ring of spectrum. So this is what, what they do. So they construct a spectrum, what was called B Y one Y minus one, whose homotopy groups is the homotopy of any little mod out by this idea. So these Ys are you know elements in here. Is this different than like the standard procedure of you have an E and E ring and then you mount motto by an an ideal? I and then you get another one. Yeah. I'm assuming it's similar, but like Sullivan Bass comes before a lot of that language, right? Like Sullivan mm -hmm. sort of um like was responsible for a lot of these ideas of organization that we that we understand today. So I don't know exactly the those but ideas, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same story. Okay, so this is a sort of general procedure. Um, Johnson Wilson applied this in a specific case. So the gap spectra, we call a VP main bracket, where their own copy is just like a truncated version. Where these Vs are the same as the generators of the homotopy of these Vs. So they basically start with the ideal v, Vn plus one and everything that way. And they they construct this. Okay, so this is nice, much smaller. Let's just give an example. I thought there's a link in the simplest case one. Maybe it's the simplest case, it's more complicated. But this is the right summary. Of um, e local connective A theory. So maybe that guy is sort of what some people know. You, know, you can also make statements about Rob K theory and a lot of B theory, but I'm not going to go there. We'll talk about that later. <clears throat> okay, what's the the point though, like why are these smaller versions good? Because for finding the W complexes, uh, it's kind of on the knee. Right, so finding the W complex, then the complete homology of X can be computed even, even just those Gaussian Wilson spectrum. It's not like literally equal, but whatever. Clarify these spectra, which were invented by Johnston Wilson, they're not the same as the Johnson Wilson spectra, right? I think these are the same. What are the Johnson Wilson spectra? Uh, e parentheses n, they're e infinity rings, and these are not. Okay, so maybe, maybe not. Okay. But um, in the green book, Gravity now calls these things Johnson spectra. Oh dear. <laughs> things, I mean, there's lots of theorems that are called. Quillen's theorem, not just like that piece of theorem of Quillen. Okay, that's most of what I'm going to say about EP. You know, the limit, how much I can do without doing like detailed computations, which I don't find good. So, talk about the atom spectral sequence. Which I'm also not going to do in great detail when so I'm just tell you what the picture looks like. So what do we want?
Well, I guess before writing everything out, we want to compute the homotopy groups of spectrum using homology, right? Homology theory. So given the homology theory, um, we want a spectral sequence. which converges to homotopy, homotopy groups, subspace, um, at least that from them. Um, whose V2 page has a special form. Um, well, essentially, we want the E2 page to be computed purely in terms of the, the homology, homology. So that we can compute the E2 page, and then the E2 page often has a lot of information. We can prove the serum, so even if it's not the end. So as a function of homology, X um, has the module over its uh, algebra power operation of uh, homology operation. Okay, but Ravenel says it's uh, better to think of this um, in the dual in the dual way. So we want it to be a function of homology as a module a co-module over the dual algebra pattern operation of co-module operation sorry the example this is what's called the classic number Oh, uh, something that Zach mentioned in the chat is yeah. that uh, what I'm calling the Johnson Wilson theories are a completed version of what you're calling the Johnson Wilson theories. So it's yeah. it really is a, a terminology issue. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so the classical one is this special case where we look at um, HCP. And then two so is defined in a certain entity. So an X over the screen on an algebra, D mod P, sorry, D mod P. Okay, so basically, this is something you just need to know the homology, you need to know how to do a screen on algebra, um, acts on it. Okay, so let's talk about how to do this in general. So, the canonical times resolution acts based on a model theory. Okay, so what do you do? So, you start with X, we'll call it zero. And we can map either the unit of E to E smash so that's zero. Then we can take the fiber of that map, call that X1, and then do the same thing. So we're going to map the unit of E to E smash X1, and then we take fibers each of the vertical maps. Called canonical resolution. Here, E is assumed to be a range spectrum, right? I think so. Because I'm just thinking about like where you get the map. Uh, and... Yeah, I mean, it has a unit. Okay. Yeah, it's the range spectrum. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm just going to write here so we don't forget, including X. One plus one is fiber. Okay, now each of these sequences, you can look at these as like the upside down else. Uh, Xn plus one, plus one, two, e, two, x, two. 
Uh, these all induce long exact sequence, long exact sequence of the moment topic. And the idea is you can sort of put all of these together for all n into a triangle, and that's an exact couple. And we know just like with the Sayre spectral sequence, exact couples give you spectral sequences. So the resulting spectral sequence is the atom spectral sequence. So in a sense, like if they're intuitive, you know, you're just Breaking up X using E, and then you get these homotopy groups that allow you to compute the homotopy of X using E. And you reassume we know E. So, okay. Um, so just a remark, I kind of this um, uses the canonical atom resolution. You can have other atoms resolutions which aren't identically this, but where you replace these bottom terms with something else. So they have to have certain properties, but you basically map X into something, take the fiber, and you keep keep doing it. So it's not a range. Adam plus one of these. You will uh, also be the spectral sequence. Okay, now you can ask why does this converge? And mass field gives you our conditions for when these spectral sequences converge. How do you enter the spectral language of the same as this? Okay. So we want to know what the D2 case looks like more generally. So this turns out to be not too bad when E is flat, as we talked about that algorithm called flat. So E is flat. Remember what this means. So this means that E star is not that. E star is E. Transfer over pi star e x. So when e is flat, then just like with the I remember the same case, the e two to h can be written as an x two. Category of uh, co modules over the dual cohomology algorithm. Okay, almost done. Let's just uh, finish this with talking about BP a little bit. Remembering that when U is flat, so BP is also flat. And we remove no cloud. Basically, it tells you what the E2 page is for BP as a second sequence looks like. So this looks basically identical to the case with 
So we said it would be an X in this category. And so to the same thing you um, but I think because of this theorem, um, I don't know if this is the history, I think because of this theorem, um, this spectral sequence is called the Adams Middle Cup spectral sequence. So I think um, summarize BP is not going to come up a ton in the book, but you often use BP to do computations, and you often use the spectral sequence, that is the spectral sequence, in order to prove things, and we're going to do that a few times. This is just a survey of what does BP look like, what are the basic properties of some of the homology, how about your boy, and uh, what is the E2 term of its kind of spectral sequence. That's all I have to think. Uh, I, there is something I wanted to mention that's kind of cool and relevant to that last theorem. So this is the BP-based atom spectral sequence. This is actually equivalent to the uh, MU at localized at P-based atom spectral sequence. This is because it depends only on the Hopf algebraid. And uh, BP and MU localized to P uh, have equivalent hop numbers from. And, and they both present the moduli stack of uh, formal groups of P. Right. That was like that, that map from MU tensor to ZP to BP. Right. Like that, yeah. Right. Because if you because the whole P typical thing is like P typical is a choice of coordinates, but every group admits a P typical. Support net or every formal group mm -hmm. does. Okay. I was I'm curious uh, if you could briefly met, talk about uh, what the conditions for convergence are, just sort of roughly. I don't remember, but there are a lot of words that we need to find. So sorry. But I think. The idea is like for most of the cases that we care about. So yeah, but that's that's the point. The point is that like this converges in BP and mu and the spectrum. Oh, is it a condition on? Is it a condition on E or on X? I think both, like the relationship. Okay. But I think it's like not super crazy. Right. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's thank you, Galgas.